The topic of mastering has been elevated to a new level by Apple in the software update Logic Pro 10.8. With the new Master Assistant feature, your audio track is analyzed using AI and initial settings are calculated as a foundation for your work. My name is Thomas Foster and in this tutorial I'll provide you with a quick and easy understandable introduction to Logic Pro's Master Assistant. I'll explain you how you can master your own tracks using this feature. You can find all my videos on Logic Pro's in a playlist which I've linked in the comments. Thanks for joining, let's go! This is Logic Pro 10.8 and I invested five minutes to create a little track, something simple with some internal sounds of Logic. Nothing special. So now we can load the mastering assistant on the stereo out channel here where it says mastering. If you don't see this, maybe the fastest way to find it is to open the mixer here with this second button here and then you find on the right side the stereo out and here is the mastering button. I click it one time. Before you click it, you should set the locator because what is happening if you click this button, it's analyzing this uh, your track. And it's analyzing exactly the section that is here in the locator. So one more time, let's give it a ray. Uh, first you set the locator to say my track starts here and ends here. Then you click on the stairway out to mastering and then you see how it's analyzing your track. In this case, because it's just four bars, it's very quick. If you have a long track of three or five minutes, then maybe it needs a little bit more time. All right. So what do we have here? We have here the equalizer section. Uh, where you can shape the sounds, maybe give it a little bit more high frequencies or low frequencies. And we have here the dynamics. That's where you can um, make your track more loud and you can watch the loops to find the right loudness for your track. And here we have the spread feature when, where you can control how much stereo your track is. All right, um, here we have the character and this is uh, pretty important. This is how all of this sounds and it depends on the genre you produce, which is the best uh, character for your track. Uh, transparent is the default character uh, used by the master assistant. Uh, sustainable for the most genre of music based on classic analog log hardware mastering uh, and it's very transparent. That's where the name is coming from. So if you don't know which character to use, start with the transparent and then listen to the others if you like them more. Um, the next one, the punch, is good for rock music because it's very punchy. That's It uh, offers an aggressive sound with a subtle emphasis on mid-range frequencies. So then we have the valve. Um, the valve is a good option for hip hop and acoustic, acoustic music. And we have the clean that is basically for EDM, for electronic dance music. So if you make electronic dance music, maybe you sh should start with the clean and then uh, take a look to transparent what you like more. All right. Now the AI analyzed our track and created this equalizer curve. So very often you will figure out that in the low frequencies, it's bringing out some frequencies and in the high or mid range, it's pushing a little bit. That's very often, but very often you don't want this because your track sounds already good. So what you should do, if you go down here to zero, nothing of this is happening. This is your original track like it was before. Maybe we go also here to zero. So now nothing here in this software 
is changing. Uh, now everything sounds like your track was sounding original. And now you can compare how do you like the sound that logic creates for you. Maybe you just like it a little bit, then you could go to 40, 50% or you say, oh, that's amazing. I love it. Then you go to 100 or maybe even more. Right? So let's listen to this. This is my original track. And now we bring in the auto EQ. All right, maybe we stay somewhere here. You can also use the custom EQ, just click on it, then it's active, and then you can change the bass frequencies. You can add some high frequencies or bring them down. And you can add some mid frequencies or also bring some out. All right. Now let's now we come to the next and maybe most important topic that's the loudness. How loud is my track? So the more you go to the right side, the more the compressor or limiter is uh, pushing the volume and compressing the track to make it even louder. Let's listen to this. Or for sure you also can bring it down. And you see here the loops of your track. So it's important to know that Spotify is at minus 14 loops. What does that mean? If your track is a little bit louder, let's say minus 10 loops, then it's making, it's playing your track with minus 4 dB. So it's bringing down the volume of your track. But sometimes that's okay because you want the sound of a more punchy, more compressed uh, track. So very much tracks are at minus 10 loops, for example. Um, what you anyway should do to get a great mastering sound, you should find some uh, tracks that you like in the genre you are producing. Let's say you are producing a rock track. So find some good international rock tracks, maybe created the last 10 or 5 years and compare with them and see how much loops do they have and try to be in the range uh, of all the tracks you are analyzing. So that's the um, dynamics. You also can use the excite button here. What is the excite button doing? The excite function in Logic adds saturation in the upper mid-range frequency. Um, so it's adding harmonic distortion to make your track a little bit more richness, warmth and present. Let's listen to this. I don't like the bass drum of this track, but um, I think we are on a good way here. And now we come to spread. Um, you have here a correlation. So here you see how much stereo is your track. If it, it's totally on the right side, then it's mono. The more it goes to the zero, the more it is a good stereo track sounding wide. The more you go in the left direction to minus one, the more it's not monocompatible. So be careful with making too much spread because the more you add here, the less monocompatible your track is. So in a good way, your track is already a little bit stereo 
and you make it even a little bit more. That's basically what, what we want. So let's listen to this. In this case, I didn't make some stereo effects, so it's very close to mono. But let's uh, see how it sounds if we go totally to mono. If you listen with headphone, you should hear a little different. And now we can add some, uh, a little bit more stereo. If you want to reanalyze your track, you can do this here. So maybe we take another selection just from here to here. And now we cl uh, click here on... Uh, sorry, now you can see it, right? Uh, we analyze selection, now it's analyzing the track new. So it's a little bit different, but for sure very close because it's the same track. And here with bypass, we can listen how does it sound without our mastering and how does it sound with. So, for sure, everybody will say, with it's much better but be careful the main reason why it sounds so much better is because it's louder and everything that is louder sounds always better even if the eq and the dynamic does not sound good you, it will sound better because it's louder to not have this problem you can use the loudness compensation then both versions if you go to bypass and if you listen to the processed track sounds on the same level, sounds the same. And then you can compare much better. Let's listen to this. And now if we click this button, it's easier to listen what does our effect do. My feeling in this case is, is it's a little bit too much. It's good what we are doing, but too much loudness, too much EQ. So maybe it's better like this. And because it's an EDM track, we are fine with clean, but let's listen also to the other characters. I created a playlist for you with all my videos to Logic Pro. You find the link to this playlist in the description of this video. Thank you for watching. Always stay creative. Cheers. We at Mugent have been working hard to create a new plugin that is more musical than anything else out there. We are thrilled to present the Mugent Player. Each instrument in the Mugent Player comes with a composition. MIDI files you just drag and drop into your session so you can be inspired not only by a sound but also by an exciting melody or characteristic chord progression. All of our instruments and MIDI files can be downloaded from the cloud. This means that every time you open the plugin, there might just be a new patch or a new MIDI file waiting for you. Simply double click to load it into your plugin. In addition to the individual instruments, the Mugen player also has kits. These are arrangements that sound like a complete song. With a single click, you can load all the patches, and as soon as you've dropped the MIDI files into your DAW, you can start using them to create something new. But the most incredible thing is, the basic version of Mugen Player is free. Click on the link in the video description to get the Mugen Player. In it, you will find a large selection of instruments. MIDI files and kits that you can download for free and start using right away. Get the Mugen Player now and create music inspired by great sounds and compositions.
Mugent to make music. <laughs>